In this video, you will learn how to achieve smooth transitions with feathering. But what exactly is feathering? And how is feathering different from other blending methods? Well, only one way to find out. And hey, are you one of these guys? Well, if you end up liking the video, consider subscribing. Okay, cool. Feathering is very similar to one other blending technique that we have already covered on this channel, and that is wet blending. When you are wet blending, you are mixing one paint into the other while it's still active. This is similar to painting with oil paints, since the pigment is physically or chemically, I guess, mixed, and it creates entirely new mid-tone color. When you are feathering a paint, you are doing the same motion, but only with one paint. First, you start by applying a layer that is kinda thick, then you rinse your brush, and finally, you spread it using a zigzag motion, or any kind of motion that will make your layer thinner the further you go. This sounds all great in theory, but there are many things that you have to keep in mind here. This technique is perhaps the most sensitive to the paint that you are using. For example, I would say that it is not difficult to create a glaze out of most of existing paint brands, but certainly not every paint brand will be good enough for wet blending or feathering because of how it behaves when you try to spread it. For example, very thick and dense paints are more easily feathered than others. Even so, I would say that you can feather most paints if they are not watery and runny or don't go chalky. <coughs> Scale 75. <coughs> Sorry about that. Additionally, you have to keep in mind that you have to work with your paint while it is still wet. Otherwise, you might create a mess. If you spread the paint fast enough, chances are that you are gonna be just fine. That is also one of the reasons why you might see some people holding two brushes. One for applying the paint, and the second one is a little damp to pull the paint. Personally, I feel like this can make me look like a f***ing badass, but other than that, I don't find it necessary. Now, speaking of two brush feathering, there are three main approaches to this method. The first one we have already mentioned. The two brush feathering where you use one brush for applying the paint and the second one to pull it. In the other two approaches you are using just one brush and the only difference between them is whether you rinse your brush before you start pulling the paint or not. If you don't, you are just spreading the paint inside the bristles until you run out. However, if you do rinse your brush, I feel like you are more in control of your brush strokes. You can also play around with how damp is your brush and with your paint choice. I have already said this in my previous videos, but it's always a good idea to get a spare base to test any blending method. The reason for this is because flat surface is perhaps the most difficult thing to get smooth gradients on, since all the mistakes are immediately visible. At the same time, you know exactly what to fix, so you can improve right away. Certainly, never feel like you have to stick to just one blending method. For example, if you are fast enough, you can apply two different colors and feather them until they meet in the middle of the gradient and wet blend them there. If you did not get a perfect blend, no worries. You can pick a mid-tone from your wet palette and glaze wherever you feel like it's necessary. Or stipple it, or whatever. It's up to you what level of smoothness are you looking for. If you feel like the paint is going dry way too fast and you are not able to pull it fast enough, you can also use some kind of paint retarder or flow improver, just like you would when wet blending. Paint retarder should make working time at least twice as long and is also great for painting eyes or details where you use very low amount of paint, which can dry out on your tip. Of course, the drying time will entirely depend on how much flow improver or paint retarder are you gonna use, and in this case I would use it sparingly. But either way, keep in mind that you are not likely gonna get as smooth of a blend as you would when layering and glazing. However, since this could be considered a secondary blending method, you can always put down a layer, feather that layer by spreading it with a clean and slightly damp brush, and then move on to glazing. During the whole process, just be careful so you don't touch the paint when you see it become dry and attached to the surface. And if you wanna continue and build on top of it, feel free to put there another layer and feather that one as well, but not as far as the previous one. Furthermore, as with all blending methods, it will be much more easier for you to get a smooth gradient if the paints that you are trying to blend are close to each other on the color wheel. This doesn't necessarily mean that they have to have similar hue, but it can also be easier if they have similar saturation and value. So for example, if I wanted to mix this green into this saturated green, it's not an issue, since they have the same hue. Now, if I wanted to blend this desaturated pink into this desaturated green, it still works, since they have similar level of desaturation, even though they are of a very different hue. But if I wanted to mix this desaturated yellow into this saturated magenta, it doesn't really work. At least not with feathering, since the colors are way far from each other on the color wheel. However, if you choose to desaturate the magenta by adding some white, it magically works again. So as you can see, feathering can make your painting way faster, so you can get down some basic gradients, so you can work on your miniature a little bit further, or leave it as it is, that's fine. Either way, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you live on planet Earth, subscribe to this channel, and see you in the next one. Bye.